thoughts on actors self-producing? Especially now with, uh, with technology the way it is and all the different platforms, Hulu and, and Vimeo and, and, and Amazon and mm -hmm. YouTube and Netflix and, and everybody looking for product, uh, that it's a, it, 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 that, that the, the landscape is wide open. But just the same way that you can make a great video, you can also make really crappy stuff mm -hmm. too. Yeah. So, I mean, and we've all seen it. I mean, there's so much stuff there's like um, <laughs> uploaded to YouTube in a minute that uh, you can't pay attention to it all. And a lot of it, a lot of it's crap. So um, that doesn't mean you shouldn't try. I mean, I self-produced a movie called Posey uh, with, uh, with uh, Sally Kirkland and Ray Wise. I mean, a great little movie. And, and I learned more, in pre and it actually turned out pretty good. Uh, but, but I learned more in, in from, from point A to point Z than I think I would have ever learned had, uh, you know, had, had I not gotten involved in that world. And I think actors, again, as she was saying, learn so much and grow so much from just the, just the, 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 the duty that you have to put into it, you know, the, 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 the attention that you have to pay to it. It's a, it's a real, uh, you know, it's a real commitment. And it allows you to see, it also allows you to see so many different aspects of the filmmaking process. I mean, I never even knew what a cinematographer did, or an editor did, or a craft services did until I had to produce my own thing. And then I learned fast, uh, you know, and then I became obsessive uh, because I wanted to make sure that everything was right. I became a micromanager, you know, and I'll never produce again. But that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> See, that's, that was my lesson that I learned. But I think for actors, it's a great opportunity for you to get in there to understand how uh, how it works and also have something go viral and have somebody say hey you're the improv girl you're the you're the cheeseburger girl I mean that's awesome you know and it helps it helps lift your your uh, your your station in the, the whole act there's a million people out there all working for the same job I, I think it's imperative these days especially with you know you have vine and YouTube and you know you have the self platform that you can you know pretty much you know, just even get an agent um, put yourself on tape and produce something and you know I've signed kids out of college from that so you know I think you have to if um, it's just it's a given everything else you guys have. Uh, <laughs> yeah I mean if you're an actor and you're asking a question of should I do something, whatever you're gonna say, the answer is yes. Just do it. <laughs> what are you gonna What are you gonna lose by doing more? Nothing. Yeah. So, uh, should I take this acting class? Should I take this improv class? Should I make my own videos? Should I try stand up? Should I do this? Should I, you know, um, people watch in you know Hollywood Boulevard and just walk walk around and look at people and try to do what they're doing? Yeah, yeah. If that's your thing, go do it. Yeah, if that's a thing that you've heard is helpful, then do it. If it ends up being helpful for you, awesome. If it ends up not, then like at least you put the effort in and you're doing your work. So I would say if that's your question, then just say yes to yourself. And also just, and I think what happens is when you do that, when you take that approach, you find out what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Yeah. And that's important. Yeah. You find out what your strengths are yeah. and what your weaknesses are. You find out, eh, you know what, maybe I shouldn't be hanging out on Hollywood Boulevard pretending to be Batman. <laughs> or, or whatever. Or maybe you should. Or you should. Yeah, yeah. I mean, How I, good is your I have to love I, One of the exercises I give is go to the mall and be something that you are completely not. You know, be blind. Be 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 a uh, uh, handicap. Be uh, uh, be be a different right. Be, be, go in and, and, and order in in a different language. It's not any language. I mean, whatever you create other are these characters, and I think that's a good idea. So anyway, I just I didn't want you to think I don't think I think Hollywood Boulevard being somebody else is good. <laughs> um, a lot of our uh, a lot of the folks at Film Creative, we we have these conversations with our actor friends and. One of the jokes that uh, some of our actor friends were talking about were uh, the actors who they spend a lot of time on Facebook, they spend a lot of, on, a lot of time on Twitter, talking about the uh, the movie that they've been in that no one's ever heard of, and they're doing uh, they're they're doing this part. And sometimes I'll read their laundry list of things they've done throughout the day. Uh, one of the questions that came up that someone suggested I ask was how, how much time do you spend, and I think you, you two would give a different answer in terms of just how, how much time would you advise an actor to spend, but 
how much time do you spend promoting yourself on social media? How much time do you spend? How much time should you spend? Which kind of piggybacks in our discussion about self-producing, self-promoting. I mean like laundry list, like I had eggs for breakfast and... Yeah, I mean a lot of times after, not just actors, but a lot of your jackfruit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, had, had jackfruit after Billy suggested it. Um, how, what would you advise an actor to do? Because we, we've all seen the, uh, we've all seen the Facebook posts, the, the, the pictures, the thing, the tweets about people who are doing too much. And of course, we're, we're in a business where people are trying to gain notoriety. And with self-producing, you, you have, as, as Billy had mentioned, there's so much out there that, that there's a challenge to gain notoriety. Mm -hmm. So how much time would you spend promoting yourself? I guess it depends. I mean, if you're if you're funny, like do it. But if you're not, like cut it out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, the problem is, is the people that aren't funny don't don't know. know. They, they don't know. Hopefully, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they're not getting any likes, and they're like, hmm. That is kind of cricket out, crickets <laughs> out there. Problem. Yeah. Um, what would you then? What would you advise a a, a client, a friend, <laughs> who you felt wasn't funny? Yeah. Or wasn't doing it enough. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. Uh, thankfully, all my clients are fabulous and talented. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and at the bottom line, is you can't like, tell. Yeah. Get out of the business shoes. You suck. Right. Yeah, which Eugene would close every five but, minutes. But here's let, let me give you my my feel as a casting director who sees lots and lots of actors uh, promote themselves. You you have to be ready. And, and when I say that, it's okay to kind of plant seeds in the beginning of your career and say, here's my agent, here's how you find me, blah, blah, blah. But when you start putting up all this stuff that you've done when you haven't really done anything, um, you're putting the cart before the horse. And we talked a little bit about it in the pre-interview, is that everybody wants to get a million Twitter followers. And they want, they want to be uh, the, the Instagram queen. And they want to be the, the king of, of, of uh, Facebook. But the problem is, is if they don't have something to back it up, they're putting the cart before the horse. You can sell anything you want, but if it's not something that's, that's, that's vital to the, what the casting director is looking for, or what an agent is looking for when they want to sign somebody, it doesn't make any difference. You know? And, you know, I think Facebook is a great place to put what you had for breakfast, because that's what I do all day. But, <laughs> but I don't think it's a great place, I, I don't necessarily think it's a great place to promote yourself until you're ready. I'm just saying, cart before the horse. I mean, you know, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Lozell, Lozell Green. She's like a YouTube star. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we wrap her. Buzz, Buzzfeed. Yeah, and she loves Buzzfeed now. And, you know, look at, I mean, talking about stuff producing and what you do on social media, I mean, that's how she started. She did, I think, like a bunch of, cin like that cinnamon challenge thing. And oh. I'm not familiar with, yeah, I know. All the millennials know them. <laughs> but um, <laughs> my assistant at the time was like 20. He's like, oh my God, I know. Them. I was like, oh, I wasn't aware, but, you know, I love them. <laughs> oh, of course. They, you know, I've heard about it. And, you know, she still does. And now she's a huge BuzzFeed star and, you know, was on a bunch of stuff. But, you know, that's somebody who was funny and posted everyday silly things. And, you know, so you just, it just depends. But um, I say, yes, I'll promote and do the social media. But, you, you know, I guess you need your friends to be like that. You know, you should, that's not funny. <laughs> or, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know either. Um, social media for me is one of those things where um, people do tell me I need to be on it more and pay more attention to it. But it's not. I. I. I am very. Again, I'm more excited about the actual work. Mm -hmm. your so working. Yeah. I'd rather forget and somebody on Facebook get mad that they said, oh, we saw your episode of blah, 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 you should have posted it on Facebook. And I'm like, yeah, I wish, but I'm more excited that you just saw it. <laughs> uh, that you watch, you know, Parks and Rec and you saw that episode or whatever. Um, if I can, yeah, sure, because you want to make sure that you get people to watch your stuff. But um, I think there is a certain thing for an actor that, um, Especially the idea of the court, uh, the the cart before the horse mentality. It's if you're if you're got a small part in this thing and you barely got a picture with you know Don Cheadle <laughs> on set and you're posting that that day as though you you know did this amazing thing and you can't wait. You know, you, if it wasn't you, would you be excited about seeing somebody else do? If that? you right. send it to your mom. You know, if you like, said it to your mom, yeah, yeah, that's one thing. But, but see, that's the whole thing, is that actors, 
come from all over the world to Los Angeles and they get that one line, the test results are in, doctor. And they have to let everybody know yeah. because, yeah. Yeah. because yeah. they've been working so hard. They spent $10,000 in workshops and they've, they've had six agents and they've met a million casting directors and can't get a break. So they get this one little thing where they have three lines, more coffee. Uh, and everybody has to know about it because what it does is it rationalizes their, their career yeah. to their mom. Right. Their mom, they can say, and their mom can say, "Did you you see him? Did you see him? He was on, or did you know?" And that's all fine. And it's all fine. Right. But when that becomes what your what you use as your right. sort of promotion, then that's when you, you cross the line and right. you're sort of yeah. you're not at that If level. it's meant for your family and your friends and for like totally. people to be excited, I think that's great. But if that's your promotional tool, you gotta kind of reconfigure it. Yeah, you know, different levels. You know, you don't see Julia Roberts, you know, posting about <laughs> or you know. I guess, you know, development to clients, like, yeah, you know, it, it is a way to promote yourself to other casting directors that you're working or to your, you know, it's, I guess just is all different levels of, yeah. you know. I think what I'm hearing is just like, just be a person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Be, be, you know, if you're excited about or something, excited. post it. Like, yeah. you're excited about being at someone's birthday party, you would post that. Yeah. If you're excited yeah. about booking a job, post it. But you don't have to, like, go crazy. I mean, at this point, like, I get excited if I get pressed, so I'm going to post that. Be like, yeah, I was in a magazine, yay. Like, that's something to me that I, if, you know, I am happy about. So I'm going to post it and I'm not going to not share that. But at the same time, I, and also right now I'm working on, uh, and this has never happened to me, I'm working on a web project where they're, where they're like, post while we're shooting. Yeah. Because it's a web-based project and they want to already start a hashtag thing. Mm -hmm. So we're doing it as we go. It's part of your job. Right, because it's part of our job. So mm -hmm. production has asked us post and do all this stuff, which seems a little strange and it's very, you're like, oh yeah, selfie, whatever. But, you know, that's kind of where we are. I think the, the idea is just like use discretion and, and do it, you know, you don't have to... I'm just getting this picture in my mind right now of this, somehow I got on another actor's list of like, what I'm up to, and I'm getting like these constant contact emails, yeah. but the what I'm up to is like, and then my, I got a dog, and, and, and like, my dog went to the park, and I was like, okay, who are you, how did I get on this email list, and like, why are you telling me? Alright, I'll take you off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Your dog's really cute. I mean, I got a dog, and I love it. <laughs> I already but, took you off. <laughs> You're, you're, you wouldn't believe how many I get. Yeah, oh, that. Yeah, day. it's casting, I'm sure. Like, I got, you know, like, I, I just started a yoga class. Yes. And, I'm, and now I'm going to be, I'm, I'm actually planting a new garden. <laughs> it's like, those are all really great things, but I don't want to know those in your constant comment. Right. Yeah, things, you know. Right. I do want to know about jackfruit, though, so I yeah. <laughs> So sign up with the jackfruit. jackfruit. I'll, I'll tweet the jackfruit. it to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and it's especially, uh, social media especially now is, kind of integrated into our work. Uh, and uh, more often than not, I will get more emails to say, here from uh, shows going, here's the tweet we need you to tweet. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Just and I literally totally. have to like just take that mm -hmm. line out and put my name in there or something like right. that. And it's and it is a thing. I mean, it's, it's a promotion thing for uh, the networks and stuff now too. So, um, I feel like that's also why your presence on overall should be still human being, yeah. so that it shows that you are a human being. Past just going like sometimes it just doesn't feel organic, right? And you can and, and and people that watch that stuff and read that stuff know yes. know if it's real or it's fake. You know, I did a movie last year called God's Not Dead, and huge uh, sixty three million dollars at, at the box office. It opened up with nine million dollars in its first weekend, the biggest faith based movie ever, but. But that movie started out with a genuine grassroots Twitter campaign, mm -hmm. where they got they got uh, ten thousand people that signed up for Twitter, and every day they would say tweet this, and those people would tweet it to there. And when the day before the movie opened up, they tweeted I think a million tweets to people go see the movie tomorrow, and uh, and so the movie opened huge. But I, that had a lot to do with it. But that was real grassroots, genuine stuff. It wasn't like the production company saying. Okay, we got to tweet this just so we know we can, you know, we can advertise the movie, and hopefully somebody will go see it. Yeah. Uh, so when it's real and it's genuine and it's grassroots, I think it's it's different than when it's like being made to do it. Yeah. yeah. But I don't want to see like some actors I post, like, like they're eating a cupcake, and I'm just like, that's not funny or interesting. <laughs> and, okay, I get it, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no dogs, no cupcakes. <laughs> Jeez, I thought I was doing. Cool.
right? <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of uh, filmmakers in our group, and this is one that a lot of our filmmakers wanted us to ask, uh, wanted me to ask today. Break out my cards uh, right now. Yeah. <laughs> Here's one for Billy and Janet. Um, how does an indie filmmaker throw out a casting call to get as many minorities to audition without limiting it to such a specific race? First, get a casting director. <laughs> no, uh, that's, a, that's actually a good question. Um, you have to put all ethnicities if you want that to happen. Uh, I mean, it's pretty simple. I mean, you, if you if if you want specific ethnicity, you can put that in there. I mean, if if for instance, you know, the family's got to be Filipino, and you don't want to have some guy in there that looks like he's Italian, you need to put out looking for a Fili or somebody who can play a Filipino family. There's all we all know that be, that in the Asian market. I mean, I'm Chinese. You guys are Filipino. It, it, there's a there's a, a place where it crosses lines, and you know, you can put. We want an Asian actor, or we want a, we want a Filipino actor, or somebody can play that that ethnicity. We just did a thing. Um, uh, he's not here today, but uh, one of my actor friends uh, who was supposed to be here. We just cast him in an ABC thing called In an Instant that they shot in Minnesota, where we were looking for Vietnamese uh, uh, people who spoke, but they had to speak real Vietnamese. So that also came into it then. So it's not just looking like them; you have to speak like them. So I think you just have to be specific without. You know, without crossing any any weird sort of lines. You know, um, I mean, there are times when when I I've seen breakdowns that are, and I'm sure you've seen them, that are that are kind of racist or kind of sexist or kind of you know they don't really they're they're not thinking they're not thinking politically correctly I guess and, and they're just uh, they just put out the breakdown in a certain way. But I think if you want a specific uh, Kind of character, you put that out there, and if you want to open up to everybody, you just say all ethnicities. Yeah, all ethnicities, or oftentimes in the breakdown, I'll see the same role just broken down into different races. Yes. You know, like 2034 African American, 2034 Asian. So it's, you know, they break it down so they don't have to filter through like all ethnicities because that's just too much work. Um, you know, to just specifically do each, you know, race or you know whatever specific breakdown you want, line by line, and just, you know, categorize it that way, but, you know, it shouldn't, as a breakdown, is that the question, or just as casting, yeah, just be specific about what you're casting. Uh, this is for uh, Tess and Eugene, what, uh, what are the challenges you believe you face as minorities who are acting, who are actors? Yeah. Sure. Uh, um, I think I've, just material. I think it, as far as uh, I have played Filipino once, and it was specifically written for Filipino because the writers had written a Filipino storyline into um, the season of, uh, of of Grimm, so they wrote a specifically Filipino storyline, and that was the first ever, from what I was told, first ever prime time television. Filipino storyline ever written in for prime time. Sorry, I did not say that, but appropriately. But um, other times than that, I've played other ethnicities. They had a bunch of Filipinos on set once, and we were all playing Burmese. <laughs> and they're like, sure, what does a Burmese look like? I don't know. Well, me here are some actors. They're all Filipino. You know, like, uh, uh, so I. Are you a skirt at home? <laughs> right, just anything. Oh, yeah, you're Hawaiian, you're whatever. You know, and I feel like um, uh, that's something that on the production side, folks aren't thinking about stories from you know, from other points of view, as, as, even when you have a breakdown and it's just written as a character, a lot of folks will still just see like a name and just automatically think that that means white as default, like that's normal. And I, I feel like it kind of has to start with the writing, so, you know, I feel lucky when I see something that the breakdown's like Filipino, I'm like, yes, somebody did something and somebody knew someone who was Filipino or there's a Filipino in the room or something. And, and that's starting to come more often, but um, I feel like, I, I, I just think material-wise. That's why I left musical theater. Like, my, my dream when I was a kid was to be on Broadway, but I've done three productions of Miss Saigon and I couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> like, I, you know, they, I did it three times. Like, I was like, I'm done doing this one show. So but, it's like, I, you know. I, if I could just chime in, I think the same way from a casting standpoint, the same way that, that the African Americans and Asian Americans and uh, uh, Hispanic Americans are being represented in more in 
more like the real world right. in TV and film now. It's also happening for for sub ethnicities, <laughs> for Filipinos, for 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 Vietnamese, right. for the the smaller uh, Asian groups, right. Latino. I mean, I just got a somebody just said we want to cast Cuban. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I don't know if you know this, but we can't put Cuban actors only in the breakdown. Mm -hmm. We have to put anybody who can play a Cuban. Mm -hmm. I to portray. To right, portray. portray. When I when I did a movie called Three Amigos, mm -hmm. uh, there we got a call from, because John Landis wanted to cast Mexican Americans because everything took place in Mexico and he wanted to give that market, which was underserved, a real. But what was happening is I had people that were from Italy and from mm -hmm. uh, that were from Cuba yeah. or from South America that would said, well, "Wait." I want to be in this freaking movie. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yeah, and the, the screen actors go call me yeah. and say, "You can't put a breakdown up." It says Mexicans only. So, uh, but but anyway, the, I think that what's happening is that the film and TV industry is recognizing the importance of representing all ethnicities, and I think that it's opening up slowly. And I think the more that that you do it, I mean, it's sort of like you do it, and then it becomes part of the thing. The right. more you do it, the the more acceptable it is, and the more the more continues to happen, so. You also, you have to create your own product, too. Specifically for the Filipino market, um, I feel like, you know, it's a little bit, I mean, I could submit some Filipinos, it's a little more pan-ethnic, instead of like, oh, it's like a Japanese person or like a Eastern and Asian market. Um, sometimes I've cast my Filipino actors for Hispanic. Um, you know, they don't know what they're not looking for sometimes. I'll, throw them in there and they'll, they'll book it. And um, so you just, but you know, I don't see a lot of like, oh, Filipino like breakdown out, like you yeah. said. Um, I mean, I had a client last year, Broadway, Here Lies Love, she was in that, mm -hmm. and that was pretty cool. That was an actual. All 40 uh, Filipino music. Yeah, yeah, every single person. I was, was in LA at the time. I was yeah, in New York. I was there. there. Um, <laughs> that was great to see. Um, so, you know, it's, it is becoming more diverse, um, but you know, it's still a very small market. Yeah, but to that said, do your thing. Like, be a good actor and be ready for any role. Like, I, I don't feel like you need to be limited by your ethnicity at all. So, you know, just be as good as you can be and let all the, that, let that evolution happen. And I, I have faith that it will happen as far as diversifying the programming that's on television. Um, it, I think it's hard, um, but I also don't know. Because uh, as I feel like if I bring my best to the room, then I'm hoping that that's what's going to happen. Because to be completely honest, I'm sure if I was walking down the street, all the Filipinos in here wouldn't be sure if I was Filipino. Mm -hmm. So, and I am 100%, and I know for sure casting people don't know that. And I know um, they don't know what I am. So I don't know what you think I am. Um, so I'm in a tough place uh, where I'm ethnically ambiguous, uh, which is good-ish, but if you're looking for all ethnicities, they don't want all ethnicities to come out. Uh, they want all ethnicities to come out, but they don't want to take a chance on this possibility. Uh, so it's, you know, uh, so what usually happens for me casting-wise is that becomes part of the conversation, especially if there's any conversation about me being married and having a child in a show. They have a hard time. Oh yeah, I've had um, Latino kids. Yeah, mm -hmm. I definitely. Yeah, I have, yeah, actually, all of my kids have been Latino. Uh, <laughs> because of the cast, because all of my Latino. wives have always um, been um, black, so that it's easy to get a mixed race child. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, because uh, that could that kid can be a mix of anything at that point. So, uh, so it's 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 tough. It's tough to hear that, and and it's also tough to be uh, in that position. But at the same time, it's like well, hopefully, uh, hopefully, you know, you just bring the best to the table, and and, and that's that's what's gonna push you through. And sometimes, regardless of your ethnicity, like it's a casting thing. Like you have to you look have a certain way, and you have to, it, it, yeah, <laughs> you have to look a certain way and be a certain way for that part. And no matter what my ethnicity is, if that's not what I'm portraying, then it's like, then get get who you're gonna get. On the other hand, though, I have seen in casting sessions over and over and over again, uh, where a part is written for 
a white guy or, uh, or for a Latino guy. And the best actor comes in and they say, well, let's figure out how we can tweak the story a little bit because I like him be better than that guy. Right. And so the, the story changes because of the, the quality of the talent. So it's up to you as actors to come in and do the best work you can and not worry about you know, all the extraneous sort of racial, you right. know, ethnic stuff, and just do your best work so people can say, hey, let's make it a Filipino guy, or uh, let's make it an Asian woman, or let's make it a, a Chinese guy, you know? There's no reason that you, that, that, you know, that you, your work can't, you know, change the way people think. I've seen it now. And, it, and it's true, and they'll do it every time, <laughs> for the most part, uh, because it is usually written as a certain way. Um, uh, the show Other Space that I'm on, that was for an uh, African-American guy, and they changed it to Filipino. Um, for uh, House of Lies, they changed it to Filipino. Yeah. For, um, uh, I mean, other than playing Hawaiian, they've changed <laughs> yeah. everything to Filipino. <laughs> uh, which is great, and it might be, you know, cut out by the edit, but it'll always be mentioned, or, uh, it'll, or it'll be part of, you know, a lot of... Um, like the Kroll show stuff, they'll or the Key and Peel stuff that I'll do, there'll always be a line of being ethnically ambiguous. <laughs> They're like, uh, yeah, and then there's that ambiguous fella, <laughs> which, which will ambiguous. always be it. Yeah, but you know that's great, and yeah, if if you do well in the room, then they're willing to be excited about it. Mm -hmm. well, that was you on Key and Peel. Like a gamer or like? Yeah, a, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then I played Cuban. <laughs> uh, so, I play Hawaiian a lot. That's funny. Samoan, you. Samoan a lot. I just they just to put me in a couple of apple boxes. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be apple boxed up. You and the rock. Yeah. You and the rock. Yeah. <laughs>